Thank you for giving us your time today, Robin, and thank you so much for being a patron of the Australian Feldenkrais Guild. Well, I think it's a huge privilege to be invited to be a patron of this really significant movement and organisation. Um, I do whatever I can only because I want to, not because of my sense of, respons sense of responsibility as a patron. I just do it because I understand what, what a difference it can make to your life, your physical and mental and emotional well-being. And what brought you to Feldenkrais in the first place? Initially, the main benefit was developing an understanding of what I was doing that was causing physical issues for me, which were very often located in my left shoulder, but probably across the, the shoulder region. So it was shoulders up and forward and, you know, like bad, worrying. But I wasn't aware of that. I'd been addicted to massage and osteopathy. So I was being manipulated a lot and having a lot of massage because I was in constant physical strain and stress. As an actress on stage and director, the stress is very high, acute. Over the period of preparing for a production, it increases uh, and becomes really quite um, high level. Mm -hmm. So I think a combination of stress over th 30, five years, <laughs> plus postural habits that were not helpful, uh, led to an acute situation and I just had to go off stage. I couldn't go on. I was in the middle of a long run. Gee whiz. Okay. And I was off for 10 weeks. And in that 10 weeks, uh, my GP had me x-rayed, sent me to a physiotherapist who was wonderful and she sent me to a Feldenkrais practitioner. Mm -hmm. And I've been going to that Feldenkrais practitioner for 25 years. Wow. Now my body is reasonably flexible. Mm. But, I, but I do believe that if I'd continued along that path of um, stiffness created by myself um, and incorrect posture, that by now I'd be in real trouble. Is there an, also uh, 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 an emotional or uh, another kind of element to it? Definitely, it's a freeing. Mm -hmm. There's a freeing and you carry tension. If you carry tension in your body, you carry it in your, your mind. And what is it that it brings to you as an actress or as a performer? Well, there are so many benefits, it's quite hard to know how to prioritise them. <laughs> Breathing. Uh, if the, the worst thing you can do as an actress is to hold your breath. A, it, it creates all kinds of constrictions vocally, but also emotionally. Mm. So if you're holding your breath, you, it, it just creates a kind of tension and anxiety. Learning how to breathe fully and in, a, you know, in, a, in the way that you learn from Feldenkrais has been enormously helpful to me. And it creates, obviously, as well as freedom of movement, it creates um, uh, a relaxation and a, and a sense of calm mm. instead of panic which is where you head when you're going to an opening night. Panic is where you go. I am an old woman, but I often play old women who look a lot older than I do. So I create a body shape that creates then difficulties for me. And so I have a treatment once a week in order to realign my whole structure so that it comes back to some sort of reasonable um, Oh, okay. Shape. Yeah, so and you're also, saying you go into the shape and then coming out of it. Is yes, it, is I go Finding into it again, it. finding yes. your true self somewhere in there. Is that right? Yes, yeah. letting go of all of those uh -huh. constrictions that, yeah. I, that, I, that I add to my own self in order to create the shape on stage of a person. Learning how to let go of those fast so I don't go to sleep all twisted and wake up mm -hmm. tense. Uh, is a huge benefit to me. So I learn how to conduct myself in my life um, outside of the work. And also I'm given specific exercises to do the minute I come off stage to kind of do opposite ex um, positions that, um, that release the tensions okay. that I've created. Okay, so you've got particular exercises that you do for particular um, performances? 
depending on the shape yeah. that I'm doing on stage, absolutely. Okay. And we do a warm up in this show, which is a musical. They do their warm up and I do my warm up. And my warm up is quite different. And I sometimes look at the things they do and think, oh, oh don't do that, it's not good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all dancers, they're all yeah. trained yeah. and they can do amazing things with their body. But I think when they're 70, they may have some regrets if they don't get to Feldenkrais quite soon. A lot of them do, of course, do Feldenkrais. Do they? Yes, and I talk about it constantly to them because they really, they really would benefit so, so much. What kind of thing would you say to them? Well, I say to them it's just a way of freeing your body so that it's there for you to use in whatever way you need to use it on stage. It's all we have. Yeah. All we have as performers yes. is this. This is, well, that's all anybody has. Yes. We start with this and we end with this and that's all we ever really own. Yeah. So, um, but I think the mental aspect of it is terribly important too. Mm. I'm always barging up to people and saying, do you know about Feldenkrais? Mm. And you start off with a word that they can't really visualise and they don't hear it clearly and then I spell it and I explain it's the name of a man called Moshe Feldenkrais uh, who was quite extraordinary and have they read uh, the Deutsch book on the brain's way of healing and the chapter on Feldenkrais. I think the science is now behind Feldenkrais. I think when he devised the work, um, he was on the edge of where science was. He was taking what science had and, and working with it to develop new processes with the discoveries. But now and the science is behind it. So if you read Norman Deutsch's book, for example, he talks about that. And we've got terminology to describe the kind of processes he developed now. Well, clearly Norman Deutsch has been an enormous influence, hasn't yes. he? And it's great to be able to quote him because he is a scientist. That's right. And yes. I always, I always emphasise the fact uh, that uh, Moshe Feldenkrais was a scientist. So, you know, it's, it's not like somebody who was at home dreaming up some nice gentle therapy on their couch. It's a serious, it was a serious endeavour. Um, no, I suppose it's, it's mainstream medicine. It's, that's, that's who we need to try and persuade. And I have spoken to various GPs that I've been to about this and suggested that they might like to know about my practitioners who are local to them, wherever I go. And some have been very receptive. Mm. Others are just polite. <laughs> I think they're, they're slowly catching up, some of them, as you yes. say. The group Feldenkrais classes I find extraordinary and really difficult, really challenging. Difficult in a good way, but the focus on the detail of one part of the body, and sometimes I can't even begin to isolate it, and I know then that I've got such a lot to learn. Those classes are just marvellous, I just love them. I love all of it. I'm a devotee, a fan, and a serious attendee, and a patron. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much.